well, those have ears, let them hear. Look, you might be reading a story, you might be watching something, an account. Ostensibly, people doing good things. But the account in the story doesn't mention God, our dad. The central, most important thing in all, all life eternal the loveliness of our dad to make things possible. Shouldn't everything be centered around this? Isn't this the most important thing in your universe and all universes? And yet to live and to talk and to not mention him, or mention him only in a very formal way, but not to say how each, each activity that you're attending your mind to is only truly intelligible from the perspective of our loving Heavenly Father caring for us all. If that isn't our continual preoccupation, we're desperately missing out. There was uh, the guru of Paramhansa Yogananda, Sri Yukteswa. I think it was him who said, well, Examine your thoughts carefully over any period of time, a few minutes perhaps, an hour or two, a day or two. I think he said 24 hours, you know, a day. And realize you're not entertaining God in your mind and your being and your living. You're not in contact with life. You're not living life properly in the awareness of him. You know, his, oh, you know literally his kindness and what he's showing you and what he's teaching you and how he's loving and caring for you. If that isn't your preoccupation, then your preoccupation is not with life and life eternal. No wonder you don't feel blessed. You're empty, you're alone. You're ploughing on through a an existence that hasn't got the eternal meaning, the awareness of his fantastic, lovely company and provision, his friendship, his goodness. You're living life without relating it to God who has your welfare and care perfectly in mind with all the rest of his creation you're living as though that were not there no wonder things go astray and don't make sense and you get so much unhappiness and grief and concern and Fear and loss and loneliness and you're not, I was going to say you're not meant to be living like that, you're not, that's not living, that's struggling to survive without
is nourishment. The source of life. You're battling with a, a mindless existence. And you're a living being that's trying to live in a, an environment where there's no, no God, as if he didn't exist, as if all this was just here and not intelligible by his, his loving kind intent. I live because of the awareness of him creator of all the source of our being and our sustenance and our life eternal our parent, our dad, our mama, I don't care what you call it. Our wonderful, wonderful, wonderful friend that makes sense of everything. This is life eternal to know and be aware of his loving kindness his company, his being in us, in all his creation, his wonderful intention to know his loving intention and, and ability to know his love, his purposing, To know you, Dad. To love you. To abide with you, to live with you, to think with you, to curl up and just be in your wonderful company and purpose, your loving kindness always. To love you, Father. To love you with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. To just adore you, to appreciate you with all gratitude, to live for you, Lord, to live for your company, your family fellowship, your wonderful motive, your goodness, you, Lord. You, to love you, to be in your embrace, to hold you, to appreciate you, to value you, to relate all things to you. Everything in my life has meaning because of you. And I'm not going to consider what it would be like without you. But that's what they're doing. I watch a wonderful program, a chap doing wonderful kindnesses, but not relating everything to you. It's as if he's presenting as the center of all kindness and goodness. In a world where terrible things happen, and he's able to be God, smooth it over, make it better, come to the rescue. And they're very grateful to him. And he goes on his way. And they're still alone. Of course, because he's immortal, he can't leave. Leave your comfort with him, with them. He can just be a a moment of kindness. It's 
not thinking of you. How could you not want to think of you? And yet I've been like that, Lord. I've been secular. I've lived struggling with a universe that's apparently without you. All sorts of endless problems that by your grace and kindness I've come through. But not aware that it's your grace and kindness. Appreciating that I've come through. But not having you to appreciate too. Now I do. My need to be thankful too is satisfied. by you, by thoughts of you, by relating everything to you, loving you, life eternal, loveliness, your company, Father, loveliness, awareness of your company, Dad, Loving you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your eternal being and your care, your kindness. You, the giver of life. Life eternal. Love you, Dad. Thank you, Dad. You see, it's John 17 again. It's quite simple. This is life eternal, to know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the way whom thou hast sent. It's as simple as that. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, Dad, glorify your Son. He gives us full attention because we're his children. We are his joy. And he showers life and blessing on us continuously, despite our, <laughs> despite our childishness, our lack of comprehension, our innocent, mindless incompetence. Because <laughs> we're kids. And he's bringing up something wonderful, you and me to be as lovely as himself, a wonderful adult in the kingdom of heaven. And when we're filled with thankfulness for his loving kindness, we mature at a phenomenally accelerating rate. <laughs> And we become as lovely as him. And I mean that in a nice way, not in some competitive way, but in a loving, lovely, beautiful way. The glorious host of heaven. Perfect company for the whole family. especially our dad, and each other, and ourselves. <laughs> Thank you, dad. Love you. Love you, dad. Thank you, dad. Now, you may wonder why I call this recording depravity, because what the word originally meant was that you were deprived of the presence of God.
the awareness of God, you see. And, well, that meant everything went wrong, of course. I mean, the whole thing's gone haywire because you don't know what the story's about. You just don't understand it. You get hold of the wrong end of the stick and you end up in the most appalling, um, desperate situations. This is what being deprived was understood to mean, you see, the medieval sort of monk understanding of things that <laughs> it got dressed into this, oh, you're up to your eyes in uh, lust and sin and uh, depravity, you see. I mean, it, it became this, Im like the word sin, isn't it? I mean, sin just meant error and it's become to mean more depraved, I mean, uh, you see, religion without the love of God, it's not very loving, <laughs> hardly surprising, is it? <laughs> it's a bit frightening and horrible. <laughs> In fact, it's terrible. <laughs> you wouldn't touch it with a barge bar. And the secular don't. They don't want to come near it. They think, oh my goodness, I just don't want that. <laughs> I may be in trouble, but I'm not that desperate. <laughs> I know, I've been secular. <laughs>